Good morning. Today we're making restaurant quality pizza at home. After high school I spent several years in the restaurant business managing Italian restaurants and I've literally made thousands of pizzas. So I want to show you some of the techniques that you can use at home to make that great restaurant quality pizza any night of the week. So to make your restaurant quality pizza you're going to need a few tools. One, you're going to need a pizza stone. This is going to heat up with your oven to about 500 degrees depending on how hot your oven can get. And this is going to really cook the pizza from the bottom up and give you that really nice crunchy crust that you get when you order from a pizza restaurant. You're going to need a piece of peel. This is going to allow you to easily put the pizza in the oven and take the pizza out. And I'm going to show you more about that when we talk about the technique. You're going to need what I call a spoodle. It's really just a ladle that's bent flat. You can get one of these. You can get an actual ladle that's low cost at Walmart, two or five dollars, and actually just bend it flat yourself. And this is going to make for painting the pizza very easy. Obviously, you're going to want to have a pizza cutter. This is for obviously cutting the pizza. No surprise there. And if you have a good set of oven mitts, you're going to want these so that you don't burn yourself. So let's talk about the pizza dough. This here is actually dough that I bought from a local pizza restaurant. There's nothing wrong with going in and buying you know, some of your ingredients. Here in Houston, at sometimes during the year, it's very difficult to make pizza dough because with the humidity, it doesn't rise well. It's also hard on occasion to get the gluten content in dough right, which allows you to really stretch the dough out so that it's not tearing easily. You're also going to need semolina, extremely important. A lot of people, a lot of people will use cornmeal. Cornmeal has a very distinctive flavor, where semolina has almost no flavor. And what this is going to allow you to do is coat the dough with semolina, and then it's going to allow you to pound out the dough so that it doesn't stick to the surface that you're using. So now we're ready to actually pound out our pizza dough and make a pizza. So I've already got the stone in the oven and it's already at about 500 degrees. So you want to take the time to let the stone come to temperature. You also want your pizza dough to be at six, about 60 degrees about room temperature so that you don't get a lot of bubbles when it cooks in the oven. So we're going to take the pizza dough and we're going to put it into your semolina and we're going to turn it and coat the entire dough ball. We're going to take a handful of semolina and we're going to put it down onto the area that we're going to pound out the dough. Here we have the top of the dough ball. This is going to become the bottom of your pizza. So we're going to flip it over. We're going to take our thumbs and our forefingers and we're going to work around the dough, pinching it. And what this is doing is this is creating what will become our pizza crust. So we go all the way around. You want to let the dough come to 60 degrees because if you don't, the cold dough will, will cause a lot of bubbles in your oven. So we're going to press out any air, just kind of, kind of press it straight down. And now we're going to actually start pounding out the pizza. So depending if you're left handed or right handed, you're going to do this differently. I'm right handed but I actually pound left handed. So just do whatever feels comfortable to you. So you're going to start, and I take my, my hand, and I'm kind of going to dig it into the crust here. I take my other hand, I'm going to pull the dough. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of pressing my fingers in, and then turning it with my left hand, and kind of press and pull, press and pull. This is probably going to take you a little bit of practice, but obviously practice makes perfect, and you're going to kind of keep going, and your, your dough is... The crust is getting thinner and thinner, and that's just good. And then you're going to kind of just drag the dough across your fingers at the top. If you tear the dough, no problem. You're just going to pull the dough back over itself and push it down and uh, repair it yourself. Don't worry about tearing the dough. If your dough is tearing very easily, it's probably because you don't have a high gluten dough. The gluten in the dough allows it to be stretchy. And without that gluten content, it is going to tear easily. So in many cases, if you buy a good dough from a restaurant, you're not going to have that problem. If you make your own dough, make sure that you get a high gluten flour to uh, make sure that you have nice stretchy dough. So we're going to continue 
to pound out the dough here. And then we're gonna work our way kind of into the middle and just stretching it by pulling our hands apart. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm making sure that the dough is consistent all the way across so that this has the same thinness. I'm gonna work the crust a little bit and I'm just continuing to spin the dough and pull the dough across my fingertips and just continue to stretch it out. And then I'm gonna pull even more as it gets bigger and it's kind of a slow process. And then what you may need to do in this case, I'm gonna to need to actually pick up the dough and what I'm doing is I'm using kind of uh, two fists and I'm gonna just kind of pull it apart a little bit with my fists and turn it. Pull and turn, pull and turn. And stretching out the dough. And so there you have your dough, it's ready. It's ready to be made into a perfect pizza. I'm just gonna get it a little thinner. So I've got my pizza stone in the oven. So I'm gonna pull that out. You're gonna be very careful because that pizza stone is about 500 degrees. So I've got my peel, I've got an oven mitt on. And so we take our pizza uh, stone, we put it on top of our peel, and here is where we take our dough and we put it right on top. So what's gonna happen is your dough is gonna actually start cooking as soon as you place it on here. You're gonna kinda stretch it out, being careful not to burn yourself, so that it's the same shape as the stone, a nice circle. And now the pizza is, the dough's already cooking. If you don't use a pizza stone, you'll never get the bottom to be nice and crispy because what will happen is you'll put the stone inside your oven and the pizza stone will heat up with the pizza. The top will end up being cooked, but the bottom will not be. I'm going to take my sauce and I'm going to pour it right in the middle with my spoodle. And you can see some steam because it's already starting to cook. And I'm going to, in a clock, clockward motion, a circular motion, bring my sauce out to the edges. If you need a little bit of more sauce, that's fine. And you don't need to go all the way to the edge. You actually don't want to go all the way to the edge. As things heat up in the oven, your sauce is going to get a little looser and everything's going to go outward. Next, I've got my cheeses. I'm using a provolone cheese. Actually, this is a mozzarella that I'm starting off with. And I get slices because the slices, I think, have the best flavor. A lot of times when you buy shredded mozzarella, there's almost no flavor to it. So I'm using a boar's head sliced mozzarella that I'm starting in the middle again, and I'm working my way out to the outside. This is going to allow, as the pizza cooks, everything to move outward. And if you look, you can see that the, the cheese is already even melting because it's on the hot pizza stone. Next, I've got a, a boar's head provolone that I'm working with, that I'm placing on. I'm actually going to end up using four different cheeses. And then I've got a just a craft sharp cheddar. And we're going to take this and we're going to make sure we get all the way to the edge. And then in the middle. kind of clean it up a little bit around the, the outside. I'm going to take a little bit of Pecorino Romano, just sprinkle over the top. And then we're going to sprinkle with a little bit of oregano. So we're going to take this, we're going to put it back in the oven, and we're going to slide it off the, pe the pizza peel. We're going to kind of just let it slide off right into our 500 degree oven. We're gonna close it and we're gonna put on a timer for eight minutes. In about eight minutes, we're gonna be enjoying restaurant quality pizza at home. So here we're taking out eight minutes later, we're taking out our beautiful restaurant quality pizza made right here at home. You can take a fork and you can just pop the bubbles and you can, you can actually kinda as it goes along, watch 
and just make sure that if you do, you can kind of pull some of the cheese in a little bit if you need to. And there you have it. A beautiful pizza that's nice and crispy, not only around the edge, but on the, the underside of the pizza. As you can see, see how nice and perfectly cooked the bottom of the pizza is? And that's because we had the pizza stone inside the oven before we actually place the pizza in the oven. So lastly, we need to cut our pizza. We're gonna cut it into eight slices. So you're gonna wait about five minutes after the pizza comes out of the oven. You want the cheese to congeal a little bit or when you cut it, all the cheese is gonna run off the pie. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna slice through one, two, we got four slices and then we're gonna cut those slices in half. And we've got our beautiful pizza slice with a gorgeous crispy bottom. Enjoy it. Mm. So make sure to read my entire blog on this post. If I've missed anything, I'll make sure to uh, write it in the instructions. I'll also have the full recipes for my sauce, for what kind of cheeses I use, uh, more information about dough. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can, um, you can send me a, a note on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you.